Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, and this week's contract tip has to do with special stipulations. A couple of things I want to cover. In the 2017 GAR contract, they did add a paragraph regarding you as an agent writing the special stipulations in your contract so that you are not charged with the unauthorized practice of law. Actually, let me back up. The Georgia legislature in 2015 passed a law. It is OCGA 15-19-59. And that law states that um, basically as a real estate agent in the state of Georgia, regarding special stipulations, you may prepare special stipulations to forms that were prepared by an attorney in connection with the listing, sale, purchase, exchange, renting, lease, or option for any real estate or the improvements thereon. So therefore, you will not be charged with um, the unauthorized practice of law if you write special stipulations in your contract. As of that law that was passed by our Georgia, Georgia legislature, July 1st, 2015. So in accordance with that, in, 2000, in, the, in the 2017 printing of the GAR contract, GAR has added under the agency and brokerage section, um, it is paragraph B10C, and it states, if broker, and earlier on in that paragraph, it did uh, go on to clarify that broker also means affiliated licensees. So it says, if broker has written any special stipulations herein, the party for whom such special stipulations were written, A, confirms that each such stipulation reflects the party's complete understanding as to the substance and form of the special stipulations, B, hereby adopts each special stipulation as the original work of the party, and C, hereby agrees to indemnify and hold broker who prepared the stipulation harmless from any and all claims, causes of action, suits, and damages arising out of or relating to such special stipulation. So GAR has put that in the contract, number one, be, due to the law that was passed in 2015, and number two, to protect you as the agent from writing a special stipulation. Now, all of that being said, I'm here to advise you to not write any special stipulations, if at all possible. Don't write them on your own. You may use special stipulations in your contract, of course, but do not write them on your own. Here's the issue. The issue is you have every good intention of protecting your client. Nevertheless, the end result typically is that you have not protected your client at all. In fact, you've harmed your client with respect to the contract. So here's an example of what I mean. Well, let's back up again. In the course of what takes precedence in a contract, as you know, there's the pre-printed verbiage, then the fill in the blanks, whatever you filled in, then the exhibits that are attached or referenced, and then the special stipulations. So a special stipulation would supersede something that is already pre-printed in the contract. So a lot of times we'll see contracts where the agent goes in and adds something, for example, pertaining to appraisal, when they have already attached a loan contingency exhibit or the appraisal is already addressed in an exhibit or in the contract itself. And the special stipulation typically will override the procedures for how the parties are to address a, an appraisal if it comes in low. Who has the right to do what? Who has the right to terminate? Are there penalties under termination? So forth and so on. Another example, is a special stipulation that absolutely has no effect on the contract. For example, here's, here's a specific example. Um, as an agent, you'll write a special stipulation that says, seller to provide property disclosure form within 48 hours of binding agreement date. And that's all you'll put. So the seller never provides it, and the buyer gets past their due diligence time frame and doesn't terminate. And then something happens and the buyer wants to terminate after due diligence. Well, so the buyer will terminate and their reason for termination is seller never provided uh, seller's property disclosure form per special stipulation one. Guess what guys, that will not hold up because all you wrote is seller to provide seller's property disclosure form. You didn't put 
uh, 48 hours after closing. You didn't put by what methods. You didn't put how uh, notification can be addressed. Now, granted, the notification part could be somewhere else in the contract with regular notice. You didn't put any termination rights for the buyer, and you didn't put termination under no penalty. So on that special stipulation in and of itself, buyer may not terminate and be protected. So I highly encourage y'all, if you're going to use any special stipulations whatsoever, use the ones that are already prepared for you in the GAR contract and in the RE forms contract. So let me show you where you can find those. So here we are. Here we are. This is a GAR contract, and basically I am in FMLS. So you go to FMLS Forms Pro, and here I am on the special stipulations page of the contract. Also, just so you know, uh, GAR in this year's printing made more room for the special stipulations. That's after I just told you not to use them. But anyway, once you are here in the special stipulations, on the special stipulations page in the contract, see this little button that says add? All you have to do is click on add and then click here where it says GAR special stipulations. I'm in the GAR contract, so I get the GAR steps. And here is a list of all the special stipulations that you may need. So for example, um, let's say that we are going to um, provide the earnest money or the earnest money is going to be, oh here, this is a good one, utilities due diligence to begin. So if you hover over it, you can read what the special stipulation is above it. And if you want to insert it, you're going to put a check box, a check mark in the box beside it, then click select. And then the system automatically adds that in your contract for you. So this special stipulation basically says, notwithstanding any provision to the contrary contained herein, the due diligence period shall commence on the date that the seller notifies the buyer that the following utility services serving the property have been turned on and billing accounts have been established, hereafter collectively referred to as utility activation, water, public sewer, electricity, gas. In the event utility activation has not occurred within blank number of days from the binding agreement date, buyers shall have the right upon notice to the seller to terminate this agreement. So let me show you too, this is also available for you in the RE forms. So here I am, I'm on an RE form contract under the special stipulation section, and I also have this add button to the left. If I click on add, now I have access to the RE special stipulations because I'm using the RE contract form. And again, I go through and determine which special stipulation I want to add to the contract. Um, here's one where it talks about the disclosure statement missing. Same thing, I hover over it, it will give me a brief synopsis of, or will tell me verbatim what's in that special stipulation. I put the check, box, the check mark in the box to the left of the one I wanna use, I click select, and the system will automatically add that stipulation into the uh, form in the contract. So for that one, again, I'm in the RE forms, and this one says, it is understood and agreed that the seller has not provided the buyer with a disclosure statement on the property as of the date of the offer. This contract is contingent upon the seller providing the buyer with a completed disclosure state on or before blank days of acceptance date. They use the term contingent upon, therefore that would be a provision of the contract. So let's go back and let me show you one more thing. So where do you find all these special stipulations? You can find them if you're going to click on a new form in the GAR contracts, you can find them there or you can also find them in the RE form contract package. If you don't know, all you have to do is click on the search button and the, the less specific you can be, the better. So if you put on ST, if you type in STIP and then click the button that says contains, You'll get all the documents in whatever forms packages you have access to that contain the word STIP. So for example, this is an F21 form. This is a GAR form, which is just a blank special stipulations page. But here are, is RE10 special stipulations, and here is the GAR list of special, stip, the index of special stipulations, and here's the uh, uh, GAR special stipulations all typed out. So you would just highlight it and then click continue. 
And in this example, it's going to pull up all of the GAR special stipulations um, that you have prepared for you. I highly, and these are them all written out. I highly encourage all of you to take a look in both sets of contract forms. If you are a GAR authorized user, then you have access to the GAR forms as well as to the RE forms. If you're not a GAR authorized user, all agents have access to the RE forms. There are already prepared attorney special stipulations in both sets of contracts. Some of them completely discuss, cover the issue that um, you want covered. For example, in the GAR special stipulations, there are, for example, notice authorized by unrepresented party. If you've taken my classes, you've heard me go on about that. If you're working with a customer, you have to have notice to that, um, to that customer rather than to the agent working with the customer. Um, here's one, SS310, repair of defects not found due to seasonal issues. Could that be an issue right now with our colder weather coming in? Yes, potentially you can't test that HVAC unit or swimming pool or hot tub or something along those lines. GAR also has a special stipulation. Utilities due diligence to begin. That's the one we just um, added as an example. Um, interest rate fluctuations prior to closing. Are our interest rates fluctuating right now? Yes, the interest rates are on the rise. So perhaps you want to take a look at that special stipulation, especially if you're writing an offer for a buyer on new construction, and by the time they go binding to the time they close, could be several months, and there could be a, uh, a, a very drastic uh, change in interest rates by that time frame. Not drastic, but more than the buyer may be qualified for. Uh, business stays defined. Conformed copy of agreement. Um, all sorts of special stipulations, home warranty, buyer's protection plan. Those are some samples in the GAR contracts package. In the RE form special stipulations, there are some others that I, I believe you will find extremely useful throughout your practice. Here's one, earnest money to become non-refundable after due diligence period. Uh, RE forms also has an interest rate fluctuation stipulation. Um, seller to have cost limitations for negotiated repairs. Seller to make negotiated repairs after closing. Seller to make repairs after buyer's loan approval. Hmm, that might be one to use. Anyway, take a look through all the special stipulations that are already written for you by an attorney that have all the elements needed to protect your client in terms of how uh, parties are going to be notified, consequences of performing, not performing, termination rights, penalties, so forth and so on. So I hope that helped. Thank you so much for watching. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education.